Okay. <clears throat> I might meant to mention this morning in the announcements. I've um, bought this book, so if we can get it put in the library, it's the called the Other Side of Calvinism. Okay. See the other side of Calvinism written backwards, the other side of Calvinism. So it's it's a really um, great book if you want to know more about um, Calvinism and or the tulip, total depravity um, and limited atonement and preservation of the saints, etc. Then um, read that book. It shouldn't take you too long. I don't know how many pages there are. There's lots of. Um, Lots of notations and things like that. So, 649 pages. So, keep you busy for a while. It would keep Jan and I busy for a long time. <coughs> Especially when we read at night. It's not easy it's trying to stay awake, eh, Jan? <laughs> okay. Boy, I'm in a dog box tonight. Okay. <coughs> right, cricket's on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm. The TV on. <clears throat> All right, let's pray and then we'll get right into this. We've got um, quite a bit to get through tonight, so uh, we're going to be here for a, a long time and a good time. Or maybe just a good time. We'll see. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, once again, Father, we give you glory, we give you honour, and we do thank you, Lord, for prophecy, for um, filling us in, really, of the things that are going to happen on the earth, Father, we know, and we are so thankful that we will escape those things which will come to pass. Uh, Father, there are some who would major on the prophecies of the end time, Father, we no, we need to preach the whole counsel of God. And so, Father, uh, prophecy is important to warn people that they need to escape those things which will come to pass. But that means that we need to know about them. And, Father, to um, write and correct incorrect doctrine. And so, Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your word as we compare Scripture with Scripture. We do pray, Father, you would continue to bless us and encourage us through your word. And, Father, once again, we give you... Uh, honour for who you are and what you've done for us on the cross of Calvary. Ask you, Lord, to hide the speaker behind the cross. And Father, we do pray, Lord, that you would lead and guide us through uh, thy word this evening. We do pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, um, is the Antichrist a Muslim? Remember that uh, this uh, new doctrines and all sorts of people who are beginning to think this way. Um, I had started to make a list and I showed Anita, was it Wednesday night? Or the previous Wednesday night? Previous Wednesday night, wasn't it? So 21 reasons why the Antichrist is not a Muslim. And I did 7 times 3, but since then I've just added more and so no longer. But my 7 times 3. <coughs> um, well, maybe 7 times 4, maybe 7 sixes. No, we need 3 sixes, don't we? 6, 6, 6. Uh, fit that. Maybe I'll find 666 reasons why the Antichrist is not a Muslim. All right, let's then do some, uh, get some answers. So, first question. When was the book of Revelation written? Okay, don't know. Okay, so early date, 65 AD, and it finished around about 95, 96 AD, during the time of Caesar the Militan. So, uh, John on the island of Patmos, he was banished to the island, and so uh, the Roman Caesar, Nero, Nero, banished him to the island of Patmos, and then he was given the uh, vision, and some believe that he might have even been taken to heaven and shown it in heaven. Now whether it was bodily taken or his spirit was taken, but <clears throat> it started about 65 AD, which is how many years after Christ's birth, if we work out, try and work out when Christ was born, I guess, there's some description, isn't there, between the, when the, the calendar actually starts. And uh, so there's always going to be some discrepancy. How old is the earth anyway? Not 
Well, if you think you're, if you're an evolutionist, how old's the Earth? It changes. Yeah, exactly. It changes. So it just it's just weird. But anyway, so when we go from zero AD, we we usually think about uh, when Christ was born and he died around about thirty three AD. So it's not that long after when the book of Revelation uh, was begun to be written and finished around 95, 96 AD. And I don't know, some of you might have Bibles that have got dates at the top. I used to have a Bible like that. And then, of course, that Bible wore out and I bought a new Bible, one that had wide margin so I can put um, better notes in there and, and things like that. Um, but, oh, now I've lost my Bible. Oh, ah. Anyway, so I've lost that, that date, so I don't know whether you have the dates or any, anything in, in your Bibles. But, so 95, 96 AD, um, when the Bible was finished. Okay. Now ask the same question of the Quran and the Hadith. Right? So from the Encyclopedia Britannica, the Hadith is news, and this is interesting, or story. Or a story. We wouldn't, we wouldn't say that. The Bible was a story, would we? But anyway, that's what they say. So, um, the record of the traditions or sayings of the prof, uh, Prophet Muhammad, revered and received as a major source of religious law and moral guidance, second only to the authority of the Quran, the Holy Book of Islam. And then it goes on, in the beginning in 16 AD, and ended at Muhammad's death in 632 AD. So we have 96 AD, when the finishing of the Bible, right? The finishing of this Bible was not, um, 95, 96 AD. And the Quran was started in 16 and finished at 632. Okay? So the Quran was written by Muhammad and giving, given to him by the angel Gabriel. You know, that's... Uh, not the angel Gabriel of the Bible, but anyway, which they say it is, but it actually isn't. Over 23 years, starting the 22nd of December, 16 AD. Okay? So, from 96 to 16. There's quite a number of years between, isn't there? To when the Bible was finished, to when the Quran was started. So the Bible completed from 65 to 96 AD. The Quran completed in 632 AD. Right? At Muhammad's death. I wonder if he'd stayed alive a little longer. He might have got some more information. So John wrote Revelation 536 years earlier. That's more than half a millennium. And I'll just use millennium to make it sound more. It's all about the words, isn't it? It's all about the words. Because 536 years doesn't sound very long. But don't you say half a, mil half a millennium? It sounds like a long time. Okay? <clears throat> so we can see already that it's a long time after the Bible was completed. Were Christians around at this time? Yes. Were Christians around when the book of Revelation was finished? Yes. Were Christians around at 33 AD when Christ was crucified? Yes. The oldest known fragments date to around 725 AD, a century after they were first recited by the angel Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay? So... The Sirat Rasul Allah was written by Ibn Arf. He did such a good job with reading the Bible. Can you read that uh, those names for me, please? Yeah, I don't know. Ibn Ishak. 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 Uh, in 750 AD, he died 773. It was edited and abridged by Ibn Al Malik <laughs> Ibn Hisham in 828. AD. 
Does that have a bearing on the Christian's interpretation using the Quran? So remember, this is where they go. They go to the Quran and say, hey, the Quran, this is what the Quran teaches, so it backs up the Bible, which gives validation to the Quran. Okay, the Quran is not the Bible. Is not the Bible. And there's some way, way out things in the Quran that doesn't match. So using the Quran as evidence on whether the Antichrist was a Jewish Muslim who, f who followed Islam. So, okay? A Jewish Muslim who followed Islam. Now David Reagan, is a, and here is the West, uh, website here, points out that Muhammad got most of his ideas concerning the end times from discussion with Christians and Jews and was later embellished by his followers. Isn't that amazing? It's no wonder it's very similar, isn't it? You know? He claimed to be a prophet, but couldn't prophesy. Prophet Muhammad. So, where am I going to get prophecies from? Oh, guess what? The Bible. Let's go to Christians and see what they think about the end time. Okay? And so, they, he goes to the end time to Christians and to Jews and was um, embellished by his followers. So the implication then is that what we read in the Hadith and Quran concerning the end times has been written with Bible knowledge. But not everything was accepted. Remember, the, they talk about an antichrist, they talk about a messiah, they talk about all these things that are going to come. Where do you think they got those ideas from? From the Bible, from Christians, by talking to Christians. Okay? But then they talk about, oh, it's a tribulation or a period of time. It's five, seven, or nine, nine or 19 years. So which is it? This means that Muslim eschatology and biblical eschatology may have some similarities because parts have been copied. Parts of the Bible has been copied. That's why it's similar. But we don't go to the Quran and say, hey, therefore the Antichrist must be a Muslim. Also means that we can discount Muslim eschatology and just stick to the Bible. And that's what we're going to do anyway, isn't it? We're going to stick to the Bible. Also, the Hadith, Islamic tradition, that deal with the end times are contradictory. Ron Rhodes says that it is difficult, the book that I have at home, says that it's difficult to construct a detailed Muslim eschatology that all Muslims would agree with. Because they're a Sunni group, and there's a Shiite group. One hates the other. One is more radical than the other. They don't agree. Does the Messiah come out of a well? Or does he come from some other place, from heaven? So if we were to compare the Bible with the Hadith and Quran to find similarities, which group would you go to? Would you go to the Sunnis or would you go to the Shiites? Well, you go to the one that fits the Bible best, wouldn't you? And then you can write a book and make merchandise of Christians because it sounds really interesting. It sounds really interesting. It's like the Genesis 6 story, right? Really interesting to make up a story about how fallen angels cohabited with woman, earthly woman. God had put boundaries between each things. Okay, we can't mate with chimpanzees and make half chimpanzees and monkeys. We're very, very similar, aren't we, in our DNA structure? God has put boundaries, boundaries where it's everything in its own kind. And so we've got to be very careful that we're not made merchandise of and using bits from, bits from each that suits. Wouldn't do that. 
We wouldn't do that. <coughs> but of course, using the Shiites and and the um, oh, lost it now. Shiites and the Sunnis, yeah, that's it. The Sunnis, and uh, that isn't really the only answer because we all disagree on different types of eschatology anyway. Some people are amillennial, some are post trivers and post whatever and mid tribs and all these sort of things and pre trib um, Pharisees and Sadducees. However, we can gauge Islam by Muhammad's attitude. Here, here's one of his attitudes, right? I am the prophet that laughs when killing my enemies. Eli's laughing. I didn't think that was really funny. But he laugh when killing his enemies. Of course, they use, they counter this with Numbers 31, verse 17. Let's go to Numbers 31, verse 17. So they say, oh, well, you see, the Bible talks about laughing when you're killing enemies. Well, does it really? Or are you just making it up? Numbers 31. Uh, verse 17. So Numbers 31 verse 17 says, Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that <coughs> hath known man by lying with him. Okay. So there it is. What's the difference? I'm the prophet that laughs when killing my enemies. And they use Numbers 31 verse 17 to counter that. What's the difference? doesn't mention laughing. I'm sure that we wouldn't laugh at killing people, our enemies. You know, we, there has always been war, Second World War, you know. New Zealanders have gone overseas to war, gone out to Africa in the desert and, and shot at Germans and probably killed them. Did they take joy in that? It was a war. It was war. But here, the prophet laughs when killing my enemies. I can just imagine it. A devilish laugh. The devil laughs. Christians and Jewish martyrs say, I will die for what I believe. But a Muslim martyr says, you will die for what I believe. See the difference? I'm prepared to lose my life for what I believe. But I'm not going to kill you because you disagree with me. You believe something different. Well, that's what they believe. They, they will kill you for what, you, for what they believe. Yes. I've been raised for jihad and I am not raised for tillage. I haven't been raised to go out and be a farmer somewhere for tillage or to, you know, just normal work. I've been raised for jihad, holy war. Okay, that's what this guy said. Or had in the hadith as well. We have looked at the role of Satan earlier. He is the father of lies. The Bible makes it clear that Satan can inspire false religion and cults. So let's have a look in, as we begin looking at the Bible now. <clears throat> so 1 Timothy. So in other words, what we're going to look at is where the source, the source, not the tomato source, not the S-A-U-C-E, but the S-O-U-R-C-E. What is the source? Where does the source of prophecy come from? Or the Quran, well, we've already seen that some of it has come from Christians themselves because Muhammad went and asked. Verse 1. So, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Now the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
giving what? Heed. What does it mean to give heed? Listen. To listen. And to accept it. To receive it. To receive it. And so, in the latter times, and that's, I believe, we're living in the latter times. We're living in the end time. And so we should be more aware of the false doctrines that are permeating Christian life. So what we've been talking about in the morning service. Churches are becoming Laodicean, very lukewarm. Lukewarm. And here we see that speaketh expressly. It's something that's really important. Really important. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He goes on in verse 2 there, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And, co and it continues on from there. Go to 1 John chapter 4. So 1 John, just before the book of Revelation. 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Now notice it's small s, not capital S. Capital S would refer to the Holy Spirit. Okay? There are other spirits that go out. Human spirit. Demonic spirits. Okay? Believe not every spirit. Don't be gullible. Don't be get sucked into. Beware of seducing spirits. Don't... don't Accept everything. You know, the Bible talks about the Bereans, who are no, more noble than those in Thessalonica, because they what? Checked out the scriptures to see whether these things be so. They went to this book. That's where they went to. And so, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many... Many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many are gone out into the world. So we have to be very, very careful in be, or gravitating to certain types of doctrines and things. We've got to make sure that we're going to check these things out. Where did it come from? So the, the Bible was finished in ni around 96 AD, 95, 96 AD. And the Quran was finished in 632 AD. So it's a, over 500 years between. And we already know from researchers like Ron Rhodes that Muhammad went and talked to Christians, went and talked to Jews, and put some of their, their discussions, I guess, into his book, Hadith. But that doesn't mean to say that makes or validates the Quran or the Hadith. Satan has knowledge of the Bible. He has biblical knowledge. You know, when he tempted Christ, I've got that here. But when Christ was uh, without food and for 40 days and 40 nights, we now, Satan took him out and he showed them everything. And, and he said, I'll give you all this if you just bow your knee to me. And it is written, Christ used the Bible. And then, of course, Satan also used the Bible. You know, die, you know jump from this building and, because the Bible says you won't get hurt. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. You know, it's, Satan knows that he is not God. He wants the position of God, but it is he knows that he's not going to have that 
You know that the war that happens in, in chapters, Revelation chapter 12, the war that happens in heaven, Satan and, and his all the fallen angels are cast out of heaven. Be great rejoicing in, in heaven over that day. But also it's woe to the inhabitants of the earth in verse 12. But look at uh, the rest of that verse. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabit inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he what? He knows or knoweth that he has but a short time. He knows. He knows. He can read the Bible just like you and me. He knows. And so Satan has biblical knowledge. He has biblical knowledge. And he quotes from the Bible. He also believes the Bible to be true. But he wants to change it. You know, many men have changed the Bible already. So Islam <clears throat> is built on pure evil, as can be seen from the Quran. Truly, God loves those who fight. Statements like that. Fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them and seize them, beleaguer them and lie and wait for them in every stratagem. Chop off their hands and chop off their fingertips. Well, before you do that, of course, you want to pull out their fingernails and then inflict the rest of the pain by chopping off their fingers, fingertips and then chop off their heads. When you meet the unbelievers, chop off their heads. We'll look a bit more at this um, chopping off their heads because that's, they believe, is one of the signs that the Antichrist is Muslim because in the, in the um, book of Revelation it talks about those that are martyred or lose their heads. And so there you go, it must be Islamic. Uh, just hold, just wait a minute. Okay, fight and slay those who don't convert uh, wherever you find them. Believers, take neither Jew nor Christians for your friends. Makes, me, makes you wonder, doesn't it, if they're really friends. Those who follow Muhammad are ruthless un, uh, to unbelievers. Um, talking about unbelievers, that's um, believing in Allah. Those who reject Islam are the vilest creatures and thus deserve no mercy. Fight them until Islam reigns supreme throughout the world. It follows then that Satan knows prophecy and we've just looked at Revelation 12.12. 12. He knows his time is short. So Satan may have tried to make Islam a valid religion by giving it something that looks like it is acceptable or something that looks true. He has done this by inspiring similar prophecies as the Bible. For example, a one world religion, rider on a white horse, false prophet and a, and a savior. Okay? Or a messiah. Right, let's go to Daniel. <clears throat> Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. Kudita. Kudita. Is it? Is that what it is? Kudita. I knew it was something like that. What's it mean? Pronunciation might be wrong, but. Okay. Kudita. What's it mean? The, the, the death blow. Here's the death blow. Right, Daniel 9. We'll begin at uh, verse 25. I'll read 25 and 26. <coughs> so 24, it talks about the 70 weeks determined upon thy people and upon uh, thy, thy holy city. So uh, thy, okay, who's the, thy is Daniel. Daniel's people are Jews. And a holy city is obviously Jerusalem. So 70 weeks are determined upon uh, the Jews. <coughs> and the holy city. So, verse 25, Therefore, 
uh, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, so King Cyrus who made that decree after they had been held in captivity for 70 years, uh, allowed them to go back and to restore uh, Jerusalem and build Jerusalem, unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So we have one lot of seven weeks and then we have another three score and two weeks that will take us up to the Messiah. Now notice that the word Prince there is capital P. So we're talking about uh, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, so that's seven weeks, and then three score and two weeks, so after that block of three score and two weeks, shall... Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And that, of course, is the tribulation week. So we have seven years. Then we have a block of three score and two weeks. So three score is 60 and two is 62. So plus the seven is 69 weeks. And then we have then another one week. And the, the difference between the Messiah being cut off to that 70th week starting up again, right, and we have the day of grace. The church age is in between. Okay, So when Christ died on the cross, it was really the time till he re returns for his bride to be caught up into heaven. And then that calendar, if you like, starts ticking over again for that last seven years. Okay, So what I want to notice though, firstly, um, so after... Three score and two weeks. So after 69 weeks, a total of seven plus the 62 is 69 weeks. All right? So after that time, after that time, shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. When Christ died on the cross, he died for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? He died for everyone. And the people of the prince that shall come. Okay, let me just go on, on a little bit. The people, okay, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD. Okay, the people shall destroy the city and sanctuary in 70 AD. Who are the ones, which people shall come? Okay, notice, oh, let me go back. Um, the people of the prince that shall come. So the people destroyed the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD. Who are the ones that destroyed the sanctuary in 70 AD? The Romans. Okay, the Romans. Uh, the prince that shall come is the Antichrist. Notice the P for prince here is small p, not capital P. So if you go back to the previous verse in 25, it talks about Messiah the Prince. Notice there that the Prince is capital P. We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The small p, the Prince that shall come, is the one that is linked with uh, number, or verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Who is the he? The prince. The small p prince. Not the capital P prince. So, <clears throat> this passage then tells that Jerusalem and its temple will be destroyed by the people of the prince who is to come. And the prince who is to come is the Antichrist, 
Who's the people? Who are the ones that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD? The Romans. So therefore, the prince of the people must, the prince must also be a Roman. Must also be a Roman. And we'll come back a little bit more. He must be from Europe. He must be, the Antichrist will be from Europe. So who destroyed Jerusalem and his temple in 70 AD? It was Titus and his Roman army, the people of the coming prince. The, oh, I'm going to oh, okay. uh, the Roman people are the people of the coming prince. The coming prince is the Antichrist. So, We've seen this before, lots of times before. We have these seven, in Daniel chapter 26 here, these seven um, princes, the, uh, nations, powerful nations, world empires. So they're starting with the Egyptian, Assyrian, the Babylonian, the Medo-Persians, the Grecians, the Roman, which is one is, and one to come, and that of course is the Roman uh, Empire, the revived Roman Empire, and then followed by Christ's kingdom at the end of that. Eight is the beginning of new things. That means why we have seven days a week, right? We have, mon we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or do we have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Starting Sunday. Sunday is always the first day of the week. <coughs> so, the eighth is the Christ kingdom, the coming kingdom. So, what this means is that unless you ignore the clear teaching of Daniel, okay, of Scripture, it is impossible to argue that the Antichrist will be a Muslim. Or Muslim. Or follow Islam. And that's Daniel 26 and 27. The prince that shall come. And he, and he, the, which he? The prince, small p. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. We know that that's the Antichrist that will confirm the covenant with many for one week. So it can only be the prince must be then a Roman. So what this means is that unless you... Oh, I've already done that. Um, he shall confirm... Yeah, I've already said that. Okay. Who is the prince that shall come? And the he in verse... I've already said that. The Antichrist. Okay. I'm just going faster than my notes. <laughs> the usual story. Uh, well, actually, no. Sometimes it isn't. So what are we up to? Okay, we'll do a few minutes. From the previous verse, we see that the Antichrist is Roman. And this Roman signs a peace treaty for one week or seven years. No Muslim would sign a treaty protecting Israel. No Muslim would sign a peace treaty protecting Israel. They want to destroy it. They're the enemies. Showed you the map a few weeks ago, right? Little Israel amongst all the Muslim nations all around. Around Africa, all north and in the west, okay, all round Turkey, right, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, surrounded by Muslim nations. And remember, I said, uh, showed you the article removing Israel from um, Islamic maps, world maps. You won't see Israel in there. <coughs> and remember, New Zealand tried to do that too, didn't they? Um, what government department tried to do that? Remove Israel? I can't remember. It was on stuff. Not that long ago. Immigration. Immigration, yeah. Immigration New Zealand. Called it Palestinian state or something like that, rather than Israel. Trying to remove it off the map. But I think they fixed it, didn't they? Yeah. Well, it was worth a try. 
I guess. <coughs> okay. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter five. One day it'll come, I guess. Sadly. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. <coughs> 1 to 3. <clears throat> but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's unannounced, it's unexpected. You know, a thief doesn't say, or well, drop you a letter or send you an email. I'm going to come and burgle you at such and such a time. Okay? It's an unannounced and is unexpected. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction uh, cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. <clears throat> the, everybody's talking about peace, safety, peace and safety, and I guess that's one of the things that the um, Antichrist will seek to do, is have this peace on earth. The Muslim population in Muslim countries around the world would never follow a Jewish leader, even if he was a follower of Islam, and submit to a peace treaty with the Jews. And then, and then set himself up in the Jewish temple. Doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't make sense. And demand that Muslims worship a Jew, even though Islamic. Doesn't make sense. If the Antichrist was following Islam and is Jewish, and, and is, sets himself up in the Jewish temple, why, what's wrong with the mosque? Or was the mosque going to be destroyed and then the temple built? Don't think the um, Muslims would like that very much. So this breaks the Islamic creed. So Islamic creed, one of the five pillars of Islam, declaring belief in the openness, or oneness, sorry, oneness of God, tefad, and the acceptance of Muhammad as God's prophet. There cannot be two gods in Islam. There's only one God. There cannot be two gods. There are... Um, God, none has the right to be worshipped but he. Okay? No, no one has the right to be worshipped but Allah. There cannot be two gods. And yet for the, the Antichrist, if his Antichrist is a Muslim, he sets himself up to be worshipped in the Jewish temple, it breaks the Islamic creed. Because the Islamic creed says there's only one to be worshipped, only one God, and that's Allah. And no one, none has the right to be worshipped but he. Allah. It appears in these forms about 30 times in the Quran. Okay? Cooper Abrams III explains in the book of Daniel chapter 11 the, uh, the specifics of the Antichrist Middle East conquest as outlined in the book of Daniel. In the middle of the tribulation, the Antichrist will go into the Jewish temple and declare that he is a God. From that day forward, his true colors are revealed, and he institutes the mark of the beast and murders anyone of any faith. Murders anyone of any faith. Regardless if you're a Muslim or a Christian. If you don't worship him, that is the Antichrist, you'll be killed. 
you'll be killed. Because, remember what happens in the middle of the tribulation? Satan indwells. Satan seeks worship. Satan wants everyone on this earth to mm -hmm. worship him. So it does not make sense that the Antichrist is, a, is Islamic. Obviously, the, uh, Daniel, that we've just seen before in chapter 9, doesn't uh, come out to it anyway. So the Antichrist actions spark Armageddon when he hears rumors of the empires that are coming to fight him in the valley of Megiddo uh, to stop his murderous campaign, then he invades many other nations. Um, and we also know that a quarter of the world's population are killed via, by means of his uh, re uh, invasions. We read that in Revelation chapter 6. Um, okay. We're going to leave that there because I want to go on to Daniel chapter 7 just to go and explain some more uh, things about how the Antichrist, it's impossible for him to be a Muslim. But we've already seen, we've probably got enough information anyway that the Antichrist is not a Muslim and that it doesn't make sense. And yet, people are getting quite rich and wealthy out of selling books to say that uh, the Antichrist is Islamic because it highlights what's happening in the world today. But the Antichrist is something which is completely separate from any religion because he'll be set himself up to be worshipped. And if no one, if, if you know, all the Muslims will be killed if they don't worship him as well. And uh, he'll do that. We'll, we'll show that from uh, Daniel chapter 7 uh, next week. So we'll pick that up from there. And then we'll finish that off. And then a few other bits and pieces um, about the Antichrist. And we've just about finished our study on the Antichrist. And then we can move on to something else. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, again study your word and uh,